All right, day one of doing the beer bottle cap floor. Never done it before. The debate is, do you start over here by the, where the toilet's going to be or start by the door? Uh, obviously from here it makes more sense in that you're not walking on your caps going down, but it might make a straighter edge because the room is probably not 100% square. We're probably going to go over here. Um, we have loads of caps and a box of kind of rubbish caps, the ones with no labels or print on them, for around where the skirting board is going to go because you're not really going to see them and you don't want to waste the good ones. We're still probably a little bit short, but we're working on that. Right. Big mistake here was using silicone. Uh, I ended up using a lot more than I thought it would need it. it became quite expensive. The best thing here would have been obviously to use a, a tile adhesive. It would have been quicker, cheaper and a hell of a lot easier. The floor is done at last. So, the only issue I have here now is I think these foily ones I might have to strip the foil off because I think it might be a problem to grout. Um, so, now it's time for mixing the grout and get the grout in. I've mixed that. Um, I'll put a link for the video I used for making a grout, but that's kind of what you're going for. A good consistency and it sticks to the trowel. The wetter it is, I think the longer it takes to dry. Let it rest now for about four minutes, giving it an occasional stir. Alright, grouting's going well. Um, what I've been doing is I get a sponge, just get a Get it damp, not wet. Squeeze the life out of it. Make sure what you can do is just lightly kind of damp the top of the tiles. Makes it easier for going over. Um, and just wet the, the top of the spatch when I give it a little dip. And you're just basically forcing it into the gaps. Like that. When you've a section done, you then get another sponge. Well, I have two sponges. I'm using this kind of fresher, cleaner one. Wetting it, rinsing it out, shaking it out. Again, that's just damp. I've done this section up there now already, and this bit now I'm just carrying on. And basically, just come along afterwards, and then a kind of a swooping motion, one swipe, then another swipe, and rinse. And again, you get all the water out, so it's just damp, it's not wet. You don't want to be adding water to the, the mix. And continue to add on the whole way along. Go back in again, give another one swipe, two swipe. At the end of it all, when it's dry, there'll be a bit of residue. You give that another little wipe in at the end. After, after, after everything has been cured and dried and everything, there'll be just a little residue on top of you, swipe that off. Now, all the sections, especially these kind of gappy bits, you want to fill them 
as much of a grout as possible because the epoxy is so expensive you want to limit the area it has to cover so grout as much as you can like if you didn't grout this now it would be a lot more expensive because every little gap would have to have epoxy on it so grout it and get it good uh, get all the holes kind of blocked and filled with, with grout right i'm after completely grout in the floor and it's now dried and uh, kind of left with this um, powdery kind of on the tiles on the caps uh, an old rag or a dry sponge will clear that up and they look perfect every epoxy instruction is different so I always follow it they're very specific and very important so make sure you follow the instructions given also allow for proper hardening um, give it a good good rest and let it harden properly before even attempting to go near it. Really happy with how that came out. I have no experience any building experience, anything, so I've just got to show that anyone can do it. And I went and put, got my daughter to sign it and it'll be there forever. Nice little touch. Pretty cool.